Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today we'll take a quick look at capacitive factor calculations by way of a series of illustrated example problems. This lecture operates under the presumption that the viewer has a basic understanding of energy and power, efficiency, and capacity factor, as illustrated in the Energy and Power, Efficiency, and Capacity Factor lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only didn't recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Mastery of capacity factor calculations necessitate active participation on your part. As such, I'm asking you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers don't match those illustrated, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Consider two students enrolled in a basic electronics course with noticeably different study habits. Theoretically, these students could study 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is obviously too much to ask, even for the most dedicated of students. The first student regularly attends two two-hour classes each week and participates in a three-hour lab once a week. Additionally, this student makes it a habit to study at least one hour a day. The second student only attends one of the two-hour classes each week and skips out halfway through the three-hour lab. Rather than studying, the student smokes a ton of weed and plays Pokemon Go in the parking lot all day. See if you can determine the capacity factor for these two students. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Each week, the first student averages about two hours of activity every day. Capacity factor is did over could. Two hours over 24 hours yields a capacity factor of roughly 8.3%. Two hours a day might seem a lot of work, but if you think about it, I'm only driving you at 8.3% of your theoretical capacity. Consider yourself lucky. Capacity factor is did over could. 0.5 hours over 24 hours yields a capacity factor of only 2.1%. This is pretty crappy. Luckily, this student captured that Pikachu down in the county gravel pit. However, I don't think it'll bear the same weight as a good GPA on a resume. Let's try some more practical examples of capacity factor. Consider a 70 megawatt turbine and a hydroelectric dam operating at a 45% capacity factor. See if you can determine how much energy this turbine would produce in one year. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Capacity factor is a measure of how often the turbine runs at full capacity. In this case, a capacity factor figure 45% means the turbine runs at full capacity for 45% of each 24 hour day, or roughly 10.8 hours. Energy is power times time. 70 megawatts times 10.8 hours yields a daily energy production figure of 756 megawatt hours. If this turbine did this for 365 days in a row or one year, ultimately it would produce 756 times 365 or 275,940 megawatt hours or roughly 275.9 gigawatt hours in the course of a single year. Let's try another illustrated example. Consider a small 50 kilowatt steam driven generator installed at a sawmill known to produce 292 megawatt hours of energy in one year. See if you can determine the capacity factor of this generator. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first determine the average daily energy output of the steam-driven turbine in units of kilowatt hours. 292 megawatt hours would be equivalent to 292,000 kilowatt hours. 292,000 kilowatt hours per year, over 365 days per year, demonstrates the average daily energy output of this generator is 800 kilowatt hours. Theoretically, this generator could produce more because it could theoretically work at full capacity for 24 hours a day. Energy is power times time. 50 kilowatts times 24 hours demonstrates this generator could theoretically produce 1,200 kilowatt hours of energy. Capacity factors did over could. 800 kilowatt hours over 1,200 kilowatt hours is a capacity factor of 66.7% meaning on average, this generator runs at full capacity for two-thirds or 16 hours of every day. Keep in mind, capacity factor is averaged over time. Any particular day may not see the generator running at full capacity for exactly 16 hours. However, over the course of time, it ultimately produces enough energy as if this was true. As an illustration of this averaging process, consider the power curve of an industrial wind turbine, which is a graph of power output at different wind speeds. In this example, we'll assume the wind turbine has a nameplate rating of 2.3 megawatts. A wind turbine power curve is typically defined by three points, the cut-in speed, the rated speed, and the cut-out speed. The cut-in speed, typically around 4 meters per second, is when the turbine actually starts producing power. Between the cut-in speed and the rated speed, power increases. 
At the rated speed, typically around 12 meters per second, the turbine generates its nominal or nameplate value, in this case, 2.3 megawatts. Between the rated speed and the cutout speed, power output flatlines at the nominal value, and finally, at the cutout speed, typically around 25 meters per second, the turbine shuts down to prevent damage. Let's say this turbine produces only 1.3 megawatts at 10 meters per second, and output drops to a paltry 650 kilowatts at 8 meters per second. Let's say the turbine is installed in a mountain pass that regularly experiences the following pattern. Every morning, wind rushes down the pass at 8 meters per second for 1.5 hours, 10 meters per second for 4 hours, followed by another 1.5 hours of 8 meters per second wind. And every evening, the phenomenon repeats itself only in the opposite direction. Wind rushes up the pass at 8 meters per second for 1.5 hours, 10 meters per second for 4 hours, followed by another 1.5 hours of 8 meters per second wind. Let's say this pattern repeats itself every single day, nonstop for one full year. See if you can calculate the capacity factor of this turbine. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Consider the first one and a half hour period of eight meters per second wind. Energy is power times time. 650 kilowatts of power expressed for 1.5 hours yields 975 kilowatt hours of energy. Consider the center block of four hours of 10 meters per second wind. Energy is power times time. 1.3 megawatts of power expressed for four hours yields 5.2 megawatt hours of energy. As the wind ramps down to eight meters per second for 1.5 hours, this period yields another 975 kilowatt hours of energy. The evening exchange is identical, only wind rushes up the mountain pass. In a single day, this turbine ultimately produces 975 kilowatt hours, plus 5.2 megawatt hours, plus 975 kilowatt hours, plus 975 kilowatt hours, plus 5.2 megawatt hours, plus 975 kilowatt hours, or 14.3 megawatt hours of energy in total. You'll note that although the turbine never runs at full capacity, it still reliably produces energy. That is the information that capacity factor conveys without having to worry about all these nitnoy details we're worrying about now. Now let's determine how much energy this turbine could produce. Theoretically, this turbine could run at full capacity 24 hours a day. Energy is power times time. 2.3 megawatts expressed for 24 hours would yield a theoretical maximum energy output of 55.2 megawatt hours every day. Capacity factor is did over could. 14.3 megawatt hours over 55.2 megawatt hours demonstrates the turbine has a capacity factor of roughly 25.9% meaning that the turbine produces an equivalent amount of energy as if the turbine ran at full capacity, in this case 2.3 megawatts, for 25.9% of a day, or roughly 6.2 hours. We know this isn't true, but each day the turbine produces enough energy as if it were true. Capacity factor is a quick estimate of how often a plant runs at full capacity and can be used to quickly estimate energy output. 2.3 megawatts times roughly 6.2 hours yields roughly 14.3 megawatt hours of energy every day. Let's add another level of detail to this example problem and examine how it influences capacity factor. Availability of the wind resource is not the only property that affects energy output. Let's say the wind turbine regularly experiences the aforementioned phenomenon every single day for an entire year, and every day it does, it generates 14.3 megawatt hours of energy. However, the turbine undergoes several periodic scheduled maintenance procedures and experiences a couple unplanned outages. Let's say over the course of a year, the turbine requires an intensive annual maintenance that takes it out of production for four full days, a less intense semi-annual maintenance that takes it out of production for two full days, and two quarterly maintenance events that take it out of production for one day each. In addition to the planned service events, the turbine in the course of a single year experiences seven days of unplanned outages, either due to a fault, a service event that extends beyond the standard time, or awaiting a necessary part. In total, these planned and unplanned outages ultimately result in the loss of 15 full days of production. Recall the turbine generated 14.3 megawatt hours of energy every day it ran. See if you can determine how the loss of 15 full days of production every year affects this turbine's capacity factor when calculated over the course of a year. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. There's a couple ways to determine capacity factor accounting for these disturbances. First, solve for the theoretical maximum annual energy output of this turbine 
by multiplying the theoretical maximum daily output of this turbine by 365 days. If the theoretical maximum daily output of a 2.3 megawatt turbine running at full capacity for 24 hours is 55.2 megawatt hours, the theoretical maximum annual energy output of the turbine is 55.2 megawatt hours times 365 or 20,148 megawatt hours of energy. Now determine how much energy the turbine actually does produce in one year, accounting for the 15 days of lost production. If the turbine produces 14.3 megawatt hours of energy every day it runs, and it runs for 365 minus 15, or 350 days, the turbine ultimately yields 14.3 times 350, or 5,005 megawatt hours of energy. Capacity factors did over could. 5,005 megawatt hours over 20,148 megawatt hours demonstrates the turbine now has a capacity factor of roughly 24.8%. Accounting for the days of lost production demonstrates that capacity factor takes a hit because although the wind is blowing, the turbine isn't operational to take advantage of this fact. As a result, capacity factor and annual energy output suffers. As this example is intended to illustrate, the availability of a particular generation resource is only one aspect that affects capacity factor. Facilities with low capacity factors might be experiencing one or more of the following issues. Lack of availability of a generation resource, scheduling or maintenance issues, frequent faults or unexpected breakdowns, or regulation and or management issues. All of these complications may result in reduced output or loss of production time and ultimately affect the annual energy output of a facility reflected in a low capacity factor figure. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, this lecture examined capacity factor calculations by way of a series of illustrated example problems. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.